Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. It's spoilerific. It is. What's up, everyone, and welcome to TVCaptive.com presents the Warehouse 13 season and series finale, season 5, episode 6, Endless. Uh, I am your host, Dom, and uh, unfortunately, I don't know where Mike is tonight, so... Oh, wait, we got a call, we got a call. Hey, it's Mike. What's going on? Mm, nothing much. Yeah? The so, magic box again. The magic box. The magic that's where box. you were last week. Yeah, that's where I was last week, and now I'm in the magic box. You're in the magic box. Ah. It's not a box, it's a Farnsworth. I know it's a Farnsworth, I want one. Speaking of Farnsworth, they didn't, did they even use the Farnsworth this episode? Not at all. That's that's kind of disappointing for their finale. No traveling necessary. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. So, unfortunately, this no is football. the end. This is the end of the line. Yeah, there was no, no football. football. None. I'm sad. We we can pretend there's a football at the end, but Yeah, we're pretending that that shooting star at the end was a football, but there was yes. no football. There was no football. <sighs> that's that's very disappointing. But we did get HG Wells. Not Ooh. once, but twice. Not once, but twice in flashbackies. So, yeah, unfortunately it wasn't present day, but you know, I'll take what I can get. Yep. So, what did you think of this finale? I liked it. It was, it was a good send off. It was. It was very good. It was, it was equal parts, you know, heartwarming and whimsical and 10,000 dancing girls rampaging through the aisles. Yeah. So we see we see the intro. They're talking about the the round, round table time capsule of memories, uh, Egyptian endless wonder, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Pete starts getting really mad over the fact that no one else is trying to save the warehouse. At that point, do you think he was justified in in being angry? <laughs> I guess he was justified in being angry. I think everybody else went to the acceptance stage of grief much quicker than he did. Yeah. It just, there was no time frame. Like, it didn't feel like they had to go and run and do this right this second. So I thought Pete was being a little unreasonable. I guess maybe he was being a little unreasonable. I don't know. But we end up learning why he was so unreasonable, but... So it, it gets justified in the end, but still. Yeah. Um... The first memory we get to see is Claudia's memory. <laughs> and just beforehand, we, we see the Warehouse 13 screen, and it's, you know, the, the zooming through the warehouse. Like, and I saw the 42nd street sign in the, the bottom corner, and I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, me neither. I was like, ah, 42nd street signs. Knew what the hell is that got to do with anything? So now I'm curious if they've been doing this all along, adding little random things in the intro that we've never noticed before. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad I didn't notice. Yeah. I did so, notice this time, but Yeah. So I don't I I'm not sure. I'm planning on at some point, probably when the D V D release comes out and you get the whole box set or something, because they, mm -hmm. they gotta do a box set. They have to. Um They will definitely. Yeah. So I'm thinking when the the box set comes out, that's probably around the time that I'll, I'll go back and rewatch everything. So mm -hmm. I know you just started because uh, um, your wife hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, we got through seasons one through. We got uh, seasons one through three are on Netflix, so we got through that. Oh, nice. nice. And she happened to watch last week's episode with me. Hmm. Without seeing any of season four or five, and she sees Steve because if you remember the end of season three, Steve was dead. Oh yeah. So she's like, how did Steve get back? What is, what? <laughs> What's going on? Who's that psychic lady? Oh, it's Claudia's sister. What? Yeah. So that'd be uh, strange for her. Yeah, spoilerific, but she says she doesn't care. So Yeah. Yep. All right, so we, we get to see 42nd Street, uh, like this tap dancing thing. Um, and the artifact was the marquee from the Strand Theater on 42nd Street. <laughs> but um probably other than Claudia's big finale dance finish I think Steve was the best part of that flashback. I, yeah, I agree. 
He tries to Tesla dip the dancers. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. He takes a rocket launcher to them. No more Mr. Nice Gay. It bounces off ricochets and goes flying past him. Everything that they were doing, it just... They, and then they, he's just like, I hate musicals. They seemed invincible. They were probably invincible. Those scary smiles, like that was... It's like, your smiles don't scare me. Maybe they okay, do. that's a scary smile. That's a scary <laughs> smile. It was, that, that was just beautiful. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh god, that's what this episode's gonna be. Crazy memories of stuff we haven't seen on, you know... Right. Here we, here we were last week thinking that they were going to be flashbacks of things that we've already seen, and though there were some of those that were skimming by just before these memories, these were brand new old memories. Yeah. Uh-huh. So There's Actually, while we're talking about this, one thing I did not like about this thing, this whole episode, mm-hmm. when, um, you know... Mrs. Frederick, you know, I, I like that they were goofing around that Mrs. Frederick was showing, you know, right. Steve a couple of her memories or whatever from the thing and all I that stuff. I was getting mad because I'm like, are we ever going to see anything from Mrs. Frederick? Like, they're keeping hey, all of, like, uh, so that's Mr. Frederick? Yeah, that, that pissed me off. <laughs> that was Mr. Frederick? I'm like, Gah! And then, you know, oh, you were there for that? That, Mr. Frederick probably pissed me off the most. But they did it intentionally to piss us off like that was their goal and they succeeded yep so yeah i enjoyed it definitely um the other artifacts that we saw in claudia's memories was um busby berkeley's flask which ended up being a drunk driver uh just yeah some drunk driver's flask yeah so they poured it over um goodman beggar's tin pan i think it's Ah. That's what it said on the screen, but I think Artie called it something else. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed like it was a mining, a tin pan for, like, you know, mining, for sifting for gold and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, um, I tried Googling this Goodman Beggar, because that's what it said on the screen. It said uh-huh. Go- Goodman Beggar's tin pan. I tried Googling it, and I couldn't find anything on Goodman Beggar, but there's somebody saying something about a, he was a blind beggar. Oh, that's pot. Oh, and the... Tin can would seek out all sources of light and knock it out. Mm. That so. makes sense. And you no, know, it would seek out a source of light, and they sprayed the flask on it to make it swerve and hit all of them. Right. So <sighs> it was kind of clever, kind of clever. Um, but at the end of uh, Claudia's memory, we learn that Claudia doesn't, in fact, want to be the caretaker. Did this come as a surprise to you? Um, kind of not. Really? She's been so gung-ho about it the last, like, season. Yeah, I guess she's been kind of gung-ho about it. But, you know what? It doesn't surprise me because she enjoy Like, that was not a question I had directly, but it's something that I think about. I'm like, huh, I guess I've noticed some of, some of that a little bit here and there. That she enjoys being an agent way too much. She does. She does. And, you know, caretaker would mean no more of that. Yeah funny That's though for sure then uh, when uh Artie's trying to convince her he shows Art, uh, she show he shows her his memory and but he gets to select his he's different than than the other ones so uh-huh it seemed like all the other people it selected it for them but Artie got to pick his and i don't know if there was any specific reason for that other I than think, that he wanted to i think he went in with a specific memory in mind and had it show hmm. you know everybody else just went in you know not really with any specific memory right so uh they went back in time to it was a 1940s officer club and at 11 35 p.m on december 31st of 1941 uh just before uh the war with japan um, uh it was yeah after pearl harbor just before a lot of people shipped out right uh somebody had activated this time bubble kind of artifact. Yeah. They go through and it's revealed that Artie can only enter once a year for 25 for, minutes at a time. Wait, so you mean you can only investigate this art for 25 minutes at a time once a year? You can see why it's aggravating. <laughs> Don't you think that this would have been something that Artie would want to explain before entering 
you have 25 minutes. Why are you going to spend the first three minutes explaining it? Yeah, exactly. I would have done, I, you know, <laughs> that's my thing. So that was, that was my little gripe with that flashback. But um, it ended up being Thomas Wedgwood's champagne glass. Uh, I looked up Thomas Wedgwood. He is uh, uh, like a pottery something mm-hmm. or other. Um, hold on, let me pull it up again. He uh, he's a master potter. That's what he was. Aha. So, uh, pottery and glass are seems like two different things to me, but I'll go with it. I'll okay, pretend. that I'll works. Pretend for the, their sakes. Either that, or there was a, a the English pioneer of photography, but I don't see how that uh, links to wine glasses. Uh, the English pioneer of photography, that makes sense. A photograph is kind of like, you know, a frozen moment in time. Hmm. But I don't see how the wine glass would cause that. Yeah, well, it didn't. It's, some of the artifacts are things that you wouldn't expect. Like, okay, Sylvia Plath's typewriter. Yeah, you'd expect that. But there are other things that, you know, you wouldn't. Like, come on, Ch- Chuck Yeager's favorite LP from last episode? Yeah. A record? I mean, maybe his flight suit. Or... The con- you know, the control stick to the jet he was in, or, I mean, anything else related to breaking the sound barrier. A record? Yeah, that's true. All right. That's I mean, true. so... So, things. it ends up being Artie's son that is with him. at the very That end one was a... Uh, I had the same reaction Claudia did. <laughs> uh, hold the phone. What? <laughs> you have a son? It's like, I, I, tell me about him. His name was Scott. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And apparently he was the reason that the warehouse rules were changed in the first place. Artie had changed the rules that agents were now allowed to have a plus one uh, to share the secrets of the warehouse with before it was only the regents. Right, exactly. So that was kind of interesting that Artie had changed a rule of the warehouse forever. He's he's the reason why this rule is in place from, from here on out. I like that that the rule is, you know, but I, 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 it makes sense because, you know, the agents would go in, have a life of solitude and not be able to tell anybody. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, no, it, it makes a lot of sense, but I'm, I'm glad that Artie kind of had this piece of history, like this rule is set in place forever because of him. So, yes. That's kind of awesome. But... We never really got to find out why Artie's son actually left the warehouse, which was kind of a little upsetting for me. Do you care to take any guesses why you think he could he may have left? Um, I'm thinking, as Artie said, you know, you're supposed you're plus one supposed to stay on the outside to keep you grounded. I think Artie wanted them to have a full and you know unique life. Yeah. But his son probably would have had to have agreed with it, so... Yeah, he probably agreed with it in some way. Something must have happened. He got whammied or something, and he had enough. That's... Yeah, that's my who theory. knows? I wish, I wish that got answered. Mm-hmm. That was, that was probably the big thing. Other than Mr. Frederick! <laughs> I think that was the big thing this episode that, <laughs> that irritated Mr. me. Mr. Frederick. Mr. Uh, Frederick. Yep. Then uh, the next one we get is Micah's memory. It's kind of uh-huh. one of the shorter ones out of the group. I think I think Micah and uh, Steve had the shortest of the the memories. Uh, Micah's memory entailed a, it was a five tailed fox artifact. We didn't get much information on it, but it turned into the anybody who wielded it into a ninja cat burglar. But did you know? That when she touches it, it turns her into a ninja cat burglar. What did you know? That it's not just me. <laughs> and then Pete comes in and he turns around. <gasps> Ninjas. And then we get that cheesy like Mortal Kombat music going on. Yeah, like the, the no Mortal Kombat knockoff. Micah. Micah. Micah Baron. Mm-hmm. It was like <laughs> Faultless Victory. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. It was so bad that it was good. It's just typical Warehouse 13. It's so bad that it's good. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of that, Micah gets called out for, for being in love with Pete. And 
she finally admits it. I think this is the first time she realizes it, too. Uh Uh-huh. But uh, did you happen to catch that smirk from Mrs. Frederick? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. It's like, That smirk. Oh, man. Mrs. Frederick knows what's going down. I'm going to tell you right now, Mrs. Frederick stole this episode. Very subtly, she stole this episode. Yes, she most definitely did. (laughs) Uh, So... Right after that, Artie ends up having this mental breakdown uh, in the warehouse. He's talking to the warehouse, saying how he put his whole life uh, on the line for the warehouse. He's never gotten anything back. He even calls the warehouse a whore. Yeah, actually, he does. Artie's just saying, you know, going on like it's some bad relationship. Yeah. And he, I was amazed. He literally called the warehouse a whore. <laughs> And then, he, just after saying he's never gotten anything back, the warehouse the wind just starts blowing through the warehouse and an apple pops rolled. off. Yeah, bounces down towards him. Did I miss, like, am I forgetting about some apple artifact, some tree that has an apple on it or something? Um. No. I think, I, I don't know. It, it was like, you know, extending that. Olive branch, except it was an apple. Yeah, I I don't even know. Don't even know. Uh, hmm. So, um, then we, uh, is, is does that mean the warehouse is alive? We've always thought known the warehouse was kind of sentient. You know, yeah, a bit. Is the warehouse itself an artifact? Maybe? You never know, actually. It'd be really interesting, considering this big artifact is housing all these little artifacts. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Um, Steve gets it through his head that, uh, he's the Marilyn monster of the group. Yes. He, He referenced Claudia as Eddie, Pete as Herman, Mike as Lily, Artie as Grandpa... But says Mrs. Frederick doesn't really fit. I think she fits fine. I think she's the dragon that hides under the stairs. Yeah, actually, she is. <laughs> and as soon as he looked at him, he's like, uh, you're not even part of this analogy. You, you don't even fit the pattern. Yeah, you don't even fit the pattern. So, uh, From there, we go into Steve's memory. We can see H.G. Wells for a second time. Yes. Uh, operating her shrinking device. Yes. Uh, Claudio and Steve were in the Nautilus 3 that was inside of Artie. And there was um, a clock lodged in Artie's heart. Yeah, this was a complete reference to the movie. Um, I think it was The Incredible Journey or something like that. Oh, no, The Fantastic Voyage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the ship, I think, was even the, named the same thing, the Nautilus. Right. Interesting. See, I didn't so, know that. We didn't. We didn't get any name for the clock or anything like that. Was Was there a clock in the the Incredible Journey? No. Um, uh, no, there was nothing like that. They were trying to save the guy because he was. I think he was like a spy or a diplomat or something, and he was a target of an assassination. Yeah. Something of that sort, I believe. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie, but I don't know. There was nothing to do with a clock. Yeah, so we unfortunately didn't get any information on it, but it, it appears that uh, Steve vaporized it. We, we, yeah. Did he neuralize it first or neutralize whatever? I don't know. Neuralize. Maybe that gun had thinking, something to do with neutralizing it. Why am I thinking of Men in Black neuralizing? Uh, yeah. That's one thing I would imagine. I'm surprised that this that Warehouse 13 hasn't come up with a neuralizer. Right. Or anything like that in five seasons. I know. Um, so when Steve comes out of his memory, he says it was an indescribable moment, but he forgot about it. Yeah. How how do you forget an indescribable moment? Because it's so indescribable. (laughs) I'm going to tell you right now, some of the most powerful memories that I have are with me forever. I'm never going to forget them. I have have memories from when I was like two years old. I'm not even kidding. Two years old stuff happened that I can remember. 
Yeah. So, this is something that happened to him within the past two years. Something big. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, he I'm guessing... Or no, what season did he come in to? Three. Three? He came in in season three. So, yeah, past, like, two or three years. He's only been there. So. Mm-hmm. How do you forget something like that in two or three years? I remember stuff from, like, 20, 30 years ago. I remember stuff from when I was two years old as well. Um, places. Somewhere, it was in Indiana. It's really all I remember. Mm. I was playing with a bunch of trucks in my grandpa's house. And that's all I remember. I specifically have one memory from when I was, uh, I had to be like four or five. I was playing in the backyard and my mom uh, is yelling through the kitchen window to come inside because it's pouring out. And I'm like, no, it's not pouring out. And uh, it just so happened that the rain had stopped directly over our house. And it was pouring in the front yard. And it was completely dry and sunny in the backyard. Oh, I love showers like that. So there was literally a spot that I could stand where the storm had actually stopped. Because... You you got to think there's there is a, an edge of the storm somewhere. It's like it doesn't rain here and rains everywhere. There there is an end to it, but it's just actually seeing that end is so rare. But that memory has been with me forever, and I will never forget that. So if I can't forget something like that when I was like four years old, how does Steve forget about being inside a human heart within the past three years? I don't know. Let's so see. so that's my other gripe with this episode. <laughs> I was, guess. Then uh, we see we see Pete trying to uh, push the compass into the furnace. <laughs> what was he thinking? Um, he wanted to just destroy stuff, I guess. <laughs> the furnace. I think. Yeah. <sighs> so during this time, Micah approaches him, and this is when Pete confesses for the first time that he's actually scared yes and, and, the whole, and he's just going on and going on and like and then all of a sudden she's like would you just shut up yeah and Micah just plants one on him yeah but uh Pete at first thinks uh Harriet Tubman's thimble is it, it's Steve uh, yeah, I yeah Steve <laughs> take off the thimble I, I don't roll that way <laughs> <laughs> then Micah shows him his hands there's no thimble Yep. He starts accusing her of being whammied. She yeah, says she's being not sick. whammied. Yep. And uh, all of a sudden, Pete is like, wow, this is real. This is real. Uh, uh, uh. We finally got to see them. They're together, officially. Yep. And then... He... <laughs> Do you hear that? I did. Those are my neighbors across the fucking street. Oh. Well, tell them I said hi. <laughs> maybe. If they're not dead, because it sounds like they're dying. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. But, uh, um, they still kept their, their banter up, though. Yes, they kept their banter up. You know, they're cuddling. Kind of, you know, like, Pete's got his hand around her uh, forearm or whatever. She's like, not at work. Never at work. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, God, this is going to be disgusting. She's not lying. Punching. After five years, I should tell you, punching turns me on. I know. I know. <laughs> Ooh, naughty. <laughs> yeah, so it was awesome. They were still able to keep up that banter. Um, yep. Then we finally get to see one of the scenes that Mrs. Frederick was showing. Mm-hmm. Lena! Yes, when she uh, hired Lena. I was so happy to see Lena, because I was so upset that they didn't even show her in the alternate timeline or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But maybe in the alternate timeline, she was doomed to die anyway. Like, she did say, I, I foresee myself dying uh, in this thing. There's nothing you could uh, you could do to stop it. Yeah. So, it was kind of sad. It was kind it was kind of sad, yeah. But, at the same time, it was really nice that they could get her, even for, like, a quick 45-second clip. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool. So, super happy with that. Um, finally, we get to see Pete's memory. Yes. 
It's very everything. quick. <laughs> <laughs> His memory is every moment of the warehouse. I'm pretty sure there was at least one clip from every episode in there. Mm-hmm. There had to have been. I did see clips from this season. There was the, you know, the Spanish telenovela, which, <laughs> which you just got saying last podcast was your favorite episode. Ole, ole. So, oh my god, that episode was just brilliant. It was in every way, shape, and form. It was so. Um, I loved it. We got to see that. We got to... I don't know. It had to have been. It had to have been every single episode. And Steve goes, it's either that or you broke the table. And then Mrs. Frederick burst out laughing. I've never seen you laugh. I am a woman of infinite mystery. This this was the most human we've seen her. Uh Uh-huh. So. uh, Right from that, they go... They go back to work. They carry on their jobs. They they don't know when the warehouse is going to end. We don't know anything. They're, they're standing over the computer. They're looking. Something's breathing fire. Person's breathing fire. It has scales. And of all places, it's in Poughkeepsie. Yeah, right. right? I know. So Poughkeepsie. I don't know if this was a nod to Mark Shepard's other show, Supernatural, mm-hmm. where Poughkeepsie. they've just been mentioning Poughkeepsie a lot this, this season, this past season, as like a... Uh, a code, secret code word that they use, and uh, Mark Shepard uses it. So, a uh, Valda in this in this series, it's highly possible that he had some kind of input somewhere and uh, requested that a, a specific word get added, or it could just be a complete coincidence. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but then we get a flash forward to decades later. So, I'd say twenty, thirty years later. That's best guess. Yeah, completely new warehouse staff. Completely Except new warehouse stuff, but... for Claudia. Yeah, Claudia is Mrs. Frederick. <laughs> but we, we see three agents. Uh, Jack, who is basically the new Artie. Mm-hmm. We see Agent Maddox, the guy... and They didn't mention the girl's name at all. No, they didn't. I forgot to check the credits to see if uh, her name was mentioned in the credits. But, um... The warehouse is still there. It hasn't moved. Mm-hmm. Pete was going crazy for no reason. 30, at least 20, 30 years later, this thing is still exactly where it was. And then as Claudia says, if I had a nickel for every time the warehouse almost moved, <laughs> well, then you'd have, I guess, a lot of nickels. You would. You would. Based on what you're saying now. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, it cuts to Claudia looking over the Egyptian Endless Wonder round table thing. I don't know how it went from Sir Arthur's Round Table to the Egyptian Endless Wonder. I don't know. Maybe the Egyptian Endless Wonders. I don't. I don't know. Maybe the table. It, the table had hieroglyphics on it or of some sort. I don't know. I don't know. But they just kept saying Egyptian Endless Wonders. So I don't know how this relates to the Round Table. I don't know. But um, we start seeing shooting stars. I'm like football, football, football. football we see a shooting football, star coming football, forward football, the camera. Like, and I'm like, Ugh! No, not the nope, football. I was like, football. damn it! It would have been so amazing if the football hit us instead of the warehouse or somebody else. If the football hit us, that would have been epic. Yes, that would have been amazing. I still think the shooting star is the football, and I'm mm-hmm. going to go with that. That'll make me happy. Yep. <laughs> so, just pretend. Um. Yeah, so, uh, I believe they're... Like a producer or something actually played Jack. Somebody involved with the show uh, played the character of Jack there in the final scene. Mm-hmm. But um, it does not look like we will be getting a Warehouse 14 spinoff series or anything like that. It looks like this this is done. Yeah, unfortunately, I believe it's done and over with. So it's disappointing. I mean, we still might get a Warehouse 14 somewhere down the line, and the fact that. Uh, they haven't announced a 14th warehouse and that they were still in warehouse 13 maybe somewhere yeah. down the line they could they could go back and explore it but unfortunately i think they are done yeah right now i think they're done and but that i've learned to be sad i've learned to never say never so i'm not counting out the possibility yeah true so overall with the few minor gripes that, that we had mrs Fre- i mean mr frederick um Steve's memory and um what was the other one? I don't remember. 
<laughs> Artie's son. Oh, yeah, Artie's son. Artie's son, how he left the warehouse. Other than mm -hmm. those three minor things, I think they did a really good job of wrapping things up. I agree. The one thing that uh, I am disappointed that we never got to see was uh, we never got to see uh, a, a Steve uh, explore any potential love interests. Yes. We did that get to fun. we did get to see his ex, but it there was an interview I, I read um a while back that if they uh had a full season that that is something that they were looking to explore. And they kind of set that up with the ex and because ah. of the the short season there was just not enough time to explore it. That's okay then. Uh, I feel that is not completely true because there was about five episodes of filler content. Mm hmm So I think they could have made it work. But, yeah, they probably could have figured something out. But these five episodes were real, like the five filler content episodes prior to this. They they were really good. So yes, they were. So I, at the same time, I I don't want I I I don't wish they had changed anything. We we had. Uh, what was it? I don't even remember the first episode this season now. Um, endless terror. Endless terror. Oh, that was Paracelsus. Yes. So that was... yeah, so that was the the first one with the alternate universe. That's where they set up episode five. So episode one was was really good uh, way to draw like jump back into the ser series, get us refreshed and caught up with everything. Uh, then we had. Secret Services, we had the Drowning Victims, uh, and, and we got to see the, the pair of Secret Service agents. And, and we got the Renaissance Fair. Yep, then we had the Renaissance Fair after that. The Savage Seduction. <laughs> the Spanish telenovela. That was beautiful. Uh, we got to see a potential future Warehouse 14, um, Kangoo Shisi, mm -hmm. which never came to be, and then the finale. So these, these past... Six episodes, though not a whole lot of major content, it was very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, ah. if they had a full season, is is there anything else you wish they uh, they would have explored? Um, Maybe, like you said, a love interest for Steve. Another love interest for Claudia. Who knows? I, I mean, I'm happy with what we got. Because yeah. we weren't going to get anything. Yeah. So I'm happy with what we got, and I'm sad it's over, but at the same time, I'm glad it ended, I guess, the way it did. Yeah, they went out on a good note, they went out on a high note, they, they went out the way they wanted to. Yep, exactly. Other minor gripe that I've had this entire season was Pete's hair. Yeah. Uh, especially showing flashbacks of divine, defining moments that are all brand new film stuff, and Pete's got the new hairstyle as opposed to the old one. Yeah. Very, very minor gripe, but continuity really bothers me. So, yeah. that's just a personal thing. But yeah, so unfortunately, it looks like that is it. We are, we are out of time. We are uh, going the way of the warehouse. Yep, exactly. So, <sighs> Mike, where can the people find you? They could find me on Twitter at Philadren. T H I L L A D R E N. You can find me down below. I can't point in this little box. Phenomenon, P H E N O M E D O M. You could find us both and others on tvcaptive.com as well as slash ASOTV podcast on Facebook, Gmail, G, Twitter, and right here on YouTube uh, for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. <laughs> Though Warehouse 13 is in fact over, we are not. We still are pumping out shows. So uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like, comment, feedback of any sorts. If we are not covering a show that you are interested in, uh, shoot us some suggestions. We'll see what we can do. Yep. Till then, <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye bye I can't believe it's over. Hmm. Could have ended worse. It could have. Could have ended a lot worse. The warehouse could have moved. Mm -hmm. They could have all died. Mm -hmm. They could have turned Steve straight. It, it, it's done now. Hit the end recording button. But, but but if I hit the end recording button, then that means it's over. Yep. Just do it.
But but this is endless. Just do it. Endless. Endless wonders. Egyptian endless wonders. <laughs>